Hi, my name is David Mayo from the California Institute of Technology and I wanted to talk with you for a few minutes about the federal acquisition regulations. Most people run screaming when they hear this term. It's the last thing they want to do in the office. Uh, I got involved with it because I was the junior person in the office and nobody else wanted to deal with it. So they said, here David, this is great training opportunity for you. Look up all these clauses and tell us what you think. And at that time, I was fortunate to have somebody telling me to do that who understood how the FAR worked. So she explained it to me. And this is something that a lot of people don't know when they're first introduced to the FAR. They think you, you see the reference in the contract, you then look up that reference number in the Federal Acquisition Regulations, and then you see the text of the clause. You read the clause, determine whether you can accept it or whether it's a problem, and then you negotiate from there or maybe push it up higher if it's, if it's a, a big issue like a publication restriction or, or foreign national control. But it may be that you don't have to negotiate anything at all. You may be able to simply show the government that this is the wrong clause for the situation. And the way you do that is you look at the f first line of every single FAR clause in the, in the full text version. It'll say, as prescribed at, in, and it'll give a reference number. This reference number takes you to the instructions that were given to the contracting officer on when to use this clause. So now you have, the government, you have access to the government's instruction manual. That is also part of the FAR. So the FAR is really divided into two pieces. There are the clauses and the prescriptions. And you, use, you reverse engineer from the contract to the clause, look to the f top of the clause, find the prescription reference, then go to the prescription reference, and that's, that'll say, when issuing contracts to an educational institution who is performing construction, include the following clause, which is the clause you were just referenced from. Well, if you aren't doing construction, if you're doing research, then this isn't the right clause for that type of contract. So right there, there's nothing to negotiate. You merely point out the reference and the prescription and push that back to the contracting officer say, saying, basically, I believe you may have included the wrong clause. And it's even better if you can find the right clause, because in the same area in the prescription, you will usually find all of the other instructions having to do with the same issue. So it'll be educational institution construction, educational institution research, educational... So then you find the research, give them that clause. So contracting officers love it when you can not just show them where they're wrong, but show them what they need to do to fix it. Rather than... So you do the work and let them just fix it. It makes it much smoother when you have to push something back to the contracting officer.